Good morning. I wanted to do a daily update like I thought I would do in 2019, but I'm getting a little bit better at doing the daily update. Um, today's video will be a continuation of stalkers will be exposed. Yesterday's video talked about the freshman boyfriend and I did it in two parts. Today's video will be how that set me up for this and how whatever criminal organization or gang that's stalking and harassing me and trying to destroy me brought people back into my life who shouldn't have been in my life in the first place. And how a series of relationships that I thought were cordial sort of set this into motion. The part of that that I want to continue on is that by being a very young person in freshman year who was targeted by an older man and how that his pursuit of me brought me into the circle of these types of people, it set me up to be sort of someone who would be naive. Someone who, like I said yesterday, fresh. The idea of someone that's naive, young, and it brought older people into my life in a way that I think they felt they could be, I would see them as sort of guiding me, but in some ways they were more than just guiding me. The good older people in my life that these people brought into my life or who came into my life were good. They didn't try to control me. They didn't try to pressure me or to, to guide me in the wrong direction. The ones I'm referring to are the ones who did. So senior year was a difficult year for me as um, a college student. I lost a very important relative of mine and her passing meant that I wanted to take time off and there were other things going on, but it was still a good year for me. I did an honest thesis in psychology. I was preparing for for a future after graduation. Once I graduated, I got the idea that maybe I should travel, you know, sort of expand my world. And um, I had finished dating the, the boyfriend and I wasn't really getting the type of um, opportunities that I felt I would have gotten. I don't know why. However, I decided to apply for a job as a flight attendant. Once I got that job, and let me just give you a little bit of reference, I became a flight attendant and I got the opportunity in December of 1995 and became a flight attendant in 1996. And I even had the opportunity to live in Saudi Arabia. I lived in Saudi Arabia for a while doing the Hodge. So as you can see, this is in the hotel in Saudi Arabia. I don't know if you guys can see this. Okay, that was my abaya that I wore. And um, I did that for almost, for a series of months before we had a furlough. And I took a voluntary furlough. And I really thought that was a, a great opportunity for me. It gave me a different view of the world. It allowed me to travel. It allowed me to um, pursue other interests that I had. And I think that during that time, I did a lot of writing. And um, I had the opportunity of being published when I was in college before, when I wasn't with the college boyfriend. So I had the opportunity in college of being published. I had the opportunity in college for being dean's list and so and building a an academic resume, doing an honest thesis in psychology, those things. But as a flight attendant, I had the opportunity to expand my resume from just not just academically, but becoming more involved in different with different people, different cultures, and that I felt was a was a way of making me a fuller person. Unfortunately, that also was a way of making me someone who these types of people who stalk people 
would want because I wasn't just this young, naive person. I was now someone who had a little bit more to offer. And so they started to pursue me. I didn't take it as a big deal because I thought, you know, that it would stop at some point. So it did. Some of the the things stopped and I moved on with my life. And I had a lot of fun. You know, I'm very close to my mom. As If some of you follow my videos, you'll know my mom sometimes holds the camera and she sort of uh, picks up things from the dollar store for me or from various crafting stores. So I tend to enjoy working with my mother and being around my mother. And what I noticed about these people is that they didn't want that relationship with my mother to occur. They wanted to keep us apart. They, they did things that sort of tried to make me feel like my mother wasn't the person I should be with. So as I became more aware of this pattern, I'll call it, and it was a pattern that happened with, I told you, the elementary school friend. It happened with the freshman year college boyfriend. It's a pattern of, of t trying to separate me from people who genuinely love and care about me. So I just wanted to get that part of this story out there. So by the time this thing started, it was a complete, it was a complete overtaking my entire life, this. So the elementary school person I got away from, the college guy I got away from, the jobs that weren't putting me on the right road for what I wanted to do, I got away from. But this started to take over my life because it became not just the job, but where I live and people walking around behind me. And I showed you guys a picture of these people on my Twitter account. My Twitter handle is at Shamika Johnson. It also became using my name in a book. It just became a complete taking over my identity, taking over who I am and not allowing me to enjoy who I am, if that makes sense. So instead of me being able to enjoy, I have an unusual name and I, I write, instead of me being able to use my name and put it out there, someone else already did it. Instead of me being able to take credit for my ideas, someone else did it. I was put in, in this position at this time in my life at 48 when I should be enjoying any successes I've had. I shouldn't be fighting people, if not by fighting them to regain my identity. My credit card was stolen. They used my name in various sites and websites that I did not complete. Um, they follow me around so I can't enjoy my life on top of being hit with things and causing me mental and physical stress. So they wanted to me, me to feel like I will be declared mentally ill. Listen, if at 48, I have the onset of mental illness, it will be because of them. It, it doesn't make sense otherwise. But to show you how there's so much good in my life and there's always been so much good in my life. And I think that's another thing. When they broke into the apartment, they started taking pictures. And this is an example of a picture they wanted. I happen to be in Central Park when the gates, that's what this, um, that orange fabric is, it's the gates. And I'm walking around with my mom. My mom, I think is really my lucky charm. She and I were walking around and we ran into the person who is not only the wife or the creator of the um, gates, she inspired the gates. So the luck that we had to have that happen. We have so many other good things that happened in our lives. Um, and instead of us being able to celebrate this, this is my mom's, you know, she's in her 70s, I'm almost 50. This is a time in our lives when we should be able to celebrate our lives and our achievements and spend time with our family and the people we hold close. We're not, we're miserable. And she's having the same thing happen to her. I, I told you I don't want to tell her story because she's entitled to her own voice. And they've taken my voice, <clears throat> quite literally taken my voice. 
but I'm not going to do that to someone else. And just to give you an idea of what an update, I told you folks that for some reason, my finger gets a blister on it. You can see it's irritated again. And part of what these crazy people are talking about in this conversation, and, and you can go to my Twitter account to hear what they're saying. They're talking about heating me up so that they can play videos in my head. Now, I don't know what that is, but it's some way that if you are sleeping or, or you're in a light sleep, if your head is heated, you can see something while you're sleeping. I don't know what that is. To me, that sounds like crazy people trying to justify abuse, but you can tell that I had this irritation. Let me see if I can get close enough. And you can see from the YouTube videos and from um, my Twitter account that there, there's some, some form of this. And I think it's a bunch of abuse and abusive people. So I don't care if that makes me sound crazy because I've never exhibited any crazy behavior in the past. This is enough to make me crazy. But if repeating what they say makes me sound crazy, then I like to say, so be it. I must tell you folks the justification for all this. When I was very young, I, a, 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 the elementary school person used to want me to sleep over and I would wake up warm. And one time, I do remember some sort of weird dream, but it was after her aunt peppered me with a lot of questions. And I remember this weird dream, but I don't remember these weird dreams much since then. And I don't know what that is. So if anyone out there knows what videos in your heads or video while sleeping or being heating someone's head up so that they can see images, let me know. Put a comment below. Hitting me in the eyes with lasers so that I can remember pictures or something like that. If you've heard of this, let me know because this has to be put out there. I want us to work together and get this resolved. They mentioned things about champagne. I don't know. Maybe they saw this book and then wanted to talk about champagne. They mentioned things about houseplants. And maybe they saw this book and, you know, they want to... I wrote an article years ago about house plants and, you know, having sort of an indoor garden or gardening. And I worked at the New York Botanical Garden. So I think between that, they got confused. So I think it's a combination of people. It's nothing, I'm not, I don't think it's something that, and I said it, I don't think it's some sort of weird thing. I think it's a bunch of criminals who targeted me because at this point in my life, I was starting a business. I was writing more. I was working. And I happened to be living in an apartment. Now it was 24 years. So I think I had assets and I had the ability to make more money. And I think that's why I was targeted. So I feel like they're throwing in all this other stuff to confuse the situation and that the people who I mentioned, the, the elementary school person and the college boy, boyfriend are with the same organization. That's the only thing that seems to fit. The people in this organization are criminals. I'm not a criminal. And instead of leaving me alone and letting me live a life, they found this opportunity and are, and they are using this opportunity to target me and bring me down. And I'm not the only one. I'm not the first one. I'm not the last one. The last note I want to end on is that the noises you hear, I want to see if you can hear something. The noises you hear that I've recorded are loud enough and I can distinguish what they're saying. The majority of things they're saying, they want to take credit for my ideas. It's not that. They say they're talking in the background to make it seem like they're influencing what I'm saying. What they're doing is criticizing me. They called me a monkey. They said I'm ugly. They said I'm highly African. No man wants me. 
if that's the case, then they're spending too much time criticizing me. They commented about my vocabulary. They commented about um, how I phrase things, my accent. There are so many critiques that they offer, nothing productive. So they're listening to my conversations, criticizing me, throwing out weird suggestions and bringing up stories. So if you want to understand why I know who's part of this criminal organization because of the stories they're telling. So for example, I'll give you a, a simple example. The college boyfriend referenced something we did when we were hanging out. How, who else would know that? I mean, that was 20 something years ago. It's not like he would, if, if he's not part of it, it's not like someone would remember that. He obviously talked about it to someone. If he's actively involved, he gave these people information about us. And I want to know if I haven't seen you since 1996, why would you be talking about me today? If I haven't spoken to you to, since 2011, why would you talk about me today? So I'm putting him out there and letting him know if you're doing this to sabotage me because the relationship didn't work out almost three decades ago, it's a failure. I don't think anybody in this world would say a 30, almost 30 years ago, a relationship that failed would be something they would talk about. I think that's something most people wouldn't talk about. So that's just an example. I hope you guys are getting the, the idea of how these, how criminal organizations work and when they target you. They seek to find out as much information about you as possible. They